the main object of today's talk is to go through these things and try and give it a scientific basis for why the nutritional deficiencies that we've identified cause the autism. And in that way, I think it's easier for people to understand what's going on. It's easier for people to understand how long it will take to turn it around and to understand some of the behaviours that the children have. That's the main purpose of today's talk. And, and I think it's very important too, the cost to the community of this is just massive. The cost of people who have children with autism, is, it's heartbreaking. And I mean, it seems to just be increasing, increasing. We're trying to turn that around to understand what's going on, look at the nutrition and see what the deficiencies are causing. So if we go through the slides, there were some known causes of developmental delay. And we identified these in the previous talk. One is iodine, which is the single most preventable cause of developmental delay. The iodine deficiency results in functional B2 deficiency. Iron deficiency has also been identified as the second most preventable cause of developmental delay. And absolute vitamin B12 deficiency has been known for 40 years to cause the developmental delay. Early on, when it, if it was diagnosed, you could easily reverse it which is slightly different to what we have in, in modern day autism. And vitamin D deficiency has been identified as a cause for development and delay. And this we think is part of the reason for the increase in the rate of autism. But the thing is, why do these things cause the delay? To go through this, we really need to know a little bit about what's going on in the brain of the children and to try and correlate these all together so you see why there's the delay. So, during development, one of the things that happens is you myelinate your nerves. You put this layer of insulation on the nerves, and what it does is it increases the speed of conduction of the nerves. So the nerves go from 2.5 meters per second to 150 meters per second. So if you want to do real-time fast processing, you need to be able to integrate your, your neuronal signals, and you need to bring them together so you can do complex reactions such as speech and movement and fine motor skills. So that's one of the things that you need to do. So you need to increase this myelination and delayed myelination is a feature of autism. The other thing you need to do is you're trying to run a supercomputer. And so supercomputers lose, use lots of energy. And so for neuronal processing that's going on, you need lots of energy. And one of the things we've found is the nutritional deficiencies reduce the efficiency of energy production from food. So you can eat a lot of food, but you're not getting energy. There are three main ways that you gen normally generate en energy. One is from uh, breaking down lipids, one is from breaking down sugars, and one is from breaking down amino acids. And all of these generate energy in a pathway called Krebs cycle. The energy then is transferred to a, a little piece of wires. You can think about the electron transport chain. And then ultimately that produces ATP, which most people would have heard about. And ATP transfers energy from mitochondria to within the cell, and that transfer requires a molecule called creatine. And so it's sort of a, a basic first-year biochemistry rundown of what goes on in energy. And so what we find is that deficiencies of any of iron, B12, B2, and vitamin D are associated with the development of autism. Now, I looked at this and I thought, well, if there's a common thing in all of this, how do they all do the same thing? And so we came up with this nexus theory. We came to get you know, what's the point in these things where you get the central point, vertex or nert or nexus, in which you get all of these things being involved. And we got up with this concept that the final piece of activation of vitamin D requires all of these together. And this is just a little cartoon of the molecules that are involved in it. And you can look at it later and you'll see that it requires iron, it requires vitamin D, requires vitamin B2, and that it also requires vitamin B12 as part of the molecule. And so this is a schematic of what we're trying to do. One of the things that vitamin B12 does is it, it causes methylation and methylation is required to make melatonin. So we've got melatonin over here. We have the vitamin, yeah. active vitamin B vitamin D, and these two work together as part of turning on neuronal stem cells, and you get this oligodendrocyte here that starts this myelination of the nerves. So if you interrupt this process, 
you're going to interrupt the myelination, you're going to interrupt the speed of conduction of the nerves. So you can have a signal and it will never be processed because it's too slow. It won't be integrated because it's too slow. So part of learning and development is that you need to speed up the signal that's on neurons. You need to myelinate the neurons and therefore you get a signal. It's no point in your signal being so slow that when you start to fall over, by the time you work out you fall over, you've already hit the ground. You have to do these things in real time. And for a supercomputer like the brain, of course, you want this as fast as possible. So we've just got a few little areas of the brain that we think are involved in developmental delay. One is the development of speech, and that's an area called Broca's region, which requires myelination. And the other two big areas, the fronto and temporal lobe. You can look them all up. There's the schema. Go back to the presentation and look at it. The brain prefers to use glucose as an energy source above all energy sources. So we get this little pathway where we bring glucose in, chop it up, and we do all sorts of things, and we end up with this last little bit at the end of the glycolysis where there's pyruvate. And then we get into this little cycle called Krebs cycle, the pyruvate and the energy. And you can see here, if you blow it up, you're going to see energy from sugar, fats, and, and proteins eventually gets to this bit. And it goes around a thing called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, and that goes on to this electron transport chain. So... These are all part of energy, so we're going to look at energy. And finally, you have this lovely little picture of the electron transport chain. And as you look at the little things for iron sulfur proteins, there's FMN, which is type, part one of the B2 things that's activated. There's CoQ10, and most of you will have heard of ads for CoQ10, what it does. Well, this is actually what it does. It sits in here. It's a little shuffle. And then finally, you make ATP, and then here's the ATP. You transfer the ATP out of the mitochondria into the cell, and this is where creatine is involved. If you don't have creatine, you can't take that energy and do anything with it. And so creatine is critical. So creatine, phosphate is phosphate, creatine, you get energy for the brain. And so this way, if you have one molecule of glucose, you can get 36 molecules of ATP, and you can use it for doing things. Now, one of the critical things about making creatine, and you can see in this, is you have this final step, which requires SAM. SAM is s methionine, which is the universal methyl donor, and you need vitamin B12 to make SAM. So without B12 or without this one little enzyme that's used, you don't make SAM or you don't make creatine, and you get nearly all the symptoms of autism just from knocking one enzyme out. I'm pretty sure that this is basically the mechanism that B12 is using. 